ladies, gentlemen, and llamas. This is Battle Box Mission 106. This is a big milestone. And it might be a, a sad day for some of you. This is our, on this channel, 100th Battle Box unboxing. Can you believe it? My very first Battle Box that I unboxed so many years ago. I'll have to check and put it in text. It's either 2016 or 17. I don't know. Maybe 15, but probably 16. It was Battle Box Mission 6. And here we are 100 boxes later. It's also the December 2023 box. So hopefully there'll be some Christmas magic in here. But regardless, I am also here to tell you that this is the very last battle box we will be doing on this channel. Because I feel like 100 boxes is a damn good run. So we're going to do the unboxing. While we're doing the unboxing, not only do I want your normal comments, you know, about what you think of stuff. I also want to know what you guys want to see this replaced with. What would you like to see me unbox on this channel in the place of Battle Box? Because I did the math and this was this was unbelievable to me when I did the math, but I'm going to do it again in front of you so that you see I'm not making this up. The average price of a Pro Plus box, it you know, it's it's fluctuated a little bit, but $150 for Pro Plus and that's not including shipping. Times 100 boxes equals $15,000. $15,000 spent on Battle Box on this channel. Holy shit. Because not a single Battle Box has ever been been uh, comped. or Now, some of it was paid by Steve for a handful of boxes in the middle. But what I'm saying is $15,000 was actually spent on Battle Box on this channel. So this is just a big thing. I want to know what you guys want to see in its place. And I'll probably put up a separate video as well asking. But keep that in mind as we go through this. 100th box on the channel. <clears throat> Confetti, fireworks. Oh, wait, I can actually do that. Confetti, fireworks. Okay. Battle Box Mission 106. And, and it was always my intention, by the way. I've been planning this for a few boxes to stop at 106. That's 100 boxes. Oh, take a deep breath. <coughs> what do you think? It's going to be a glorious December Christmas box, or it's going to be meh, or what is it? So, we've got the mission card, we've got a big Savibi box, I'm going to start taking everything out, I'm going to try not to, uh, I'm going to try not to observe too much so that we can just get through this. Ah. Because I want to really, oh, what fell? I want to experience this together, guys. Is there more stuff in here? Okay. All right, I'm going to move this big thing over here so that we can do this. Um, that's interesting. Okay. So, let's see what we've got. Real quick, for the very last time. Battle Box has four different levels. You've got the Basic, the Advanced, the Pro, and the Pro Plus. When you get the Pro Plus, you get everything that comes in all the other levels. You know, when you get a higher level, you get that and everything that comes in one before it. So we got the Pro Plus. We've always done the Pro Plus on this channel. Um, so we are looking at the whole big thing. So let's hope that we've got a really cool Christmas box going on. Um, so we shall see. <coughs> so we're going to start in the Basic Box with... I don't know what this thing is. I don't know. Okay. All right. Um, this goes with, so we've got some food. We've got, all right. So we're going to start in the basic box. Item number one, Eco Vessels Wonderware Reusable Stainless Steel Utensil Set. And that's so interesting that it's stainless steel. It's interesting to me because usually this stuff is either aluminum or titanium. So we've got a four pronged fork. We've got a knife, a large spoon, a straw, and a straw brush. Okay. It's a nice container, I will say. Nice, 
package feels good nice nylon little rubbery name tag thing <clears throat> so I'm gonna now I'm not commenting on quality or anything right now it's it, I don't know to me it's interesting that they put a straw in here um, not in not interesting in a bad way it's just interesting because as utensils um, I don't know it like uh, never mind never mind I'm not I'm not even gonna say anything yet so let's just see what we got so these do feel sturdier than a lot of the aluminum and titanium and there's a lot of controversy when you buy some titanium sets there's a lot of times people are like hey is that really titanium or is it just aluminum that they charge you for titanium because a lot of the titanium sets you get like walmart or find on amazon are a very affordable price and you would think honestly that for true titanium you'd be paying more so i've actually seen you know i've shown some sets we've seen some sets online and everything and people have commented is that really titanium but we've got a straw and i can't listen i'm in no position to shit talk a fucking straw because in my cup that you see me use all the time i've got a steel straw in the cup because let's face it it's uh, easier than tipping this up and you know especially we've got ice in it and everything I, listen i enjoy the straw i'm not gonna talk crap about a straw and i just took a drink right now i have to stay nice and hydrated um it's got a little rubber uh bite bit thing right there and one of the pain in the ass things is cleaning out a straw yeah you can just run water on it but it is nice to have a brush to keep it nice and clean so this with this let's just see real quick this this actually does it fits in my cup but it just barely this is what 32 i think this is a 32 ounce 32 ounce tumbler it oh well with the ice it holds it up but um, it wouldn't get all the way to the bottom so I don't know I won't fault it that much you know but it would be nice to have one that you know fits all the way um, so we got that but these do feel I think guys I'm sorry um a little I just did all my inhalers so <laughs> uh, they're they get you a little bit jumpy um these do feel sturdy they feel sturdier than a lot of other ones what kind of steel are they um finish I don't know interesting I'm not sure if it says what kind of steel they are. Let me take a look. I'm assuming stainless of some type. They look blued, you know, as in gun blued. Gun blue is terrible in terms of a safety hazard, but that's mainly the process of doing it and breathing it in um, and getting it on your hands. Once it's done, it's okay. It's totally safe, um, but it doesn't really say. They're food grade stainless steel. That's all it says. Um, but <coughs> sorry but having these they, it's i mean they feel a lot more sturdy than the aluminum slash titanium ones uh, just because the aluminum and titanium ones have a lot more give in them so it's interesting you know i have sets that are probably three or four times the price of these because they're titanium um, and those are fun because you can like heat oxidize slash anno them um i definitely wouldn't kick these things out of bed in the morning you know i think these are definitely good let's face it now i did i mean i can i can think of a, a few different people that the, this would make a great present for or a stocking stuff or something um i actually would not mind using this throwing it in a pack and keeping it around um my one thought would be okay you're out and about and you're you know using it um you, you, there's a theoretically you might have to put it back dirty into this nice little container but not bad not great um i'm somewhere between like it and meh but i think it, it's you know it does like i said i i bought little little camping utensil sets before and at least these feel real sturdy next we've got right on trick two personal meals chicken alfredo i love chicken alfredo I love a well-done chicken Alfredo, and my Italian heritage slaps me in the face for saying this. I really like Olive Garden's chicken Alfredo, to tell you the truth. <coughs> um, nothing at the Olive Garden is real Italian food, by the way. So, this feeds two tired, hungry explorers, 
and I love that they throw that in there. <laughs> it's not, not good for normal people, because when you're normal, you know, in the house, you don't want to eat this. But when you're tired, hungry explorers, it's good. I, I like that they're giving you the truth in advertising that. Um, this feels like a hefty kind of meal there. It's probably not any bigger or smaller than, than some of the other ones there. Wow, 510 calories per serving, 1,030 calories per bag. Cool. That Alfredo sauce will catch you, man. Um, I think we're going to do a taste test on this. Um, cook longer at elevation. If you don't understand how that works, there's a whole thing. You should look that up, you know, cooking at higher elevations. But 1.5 liter pot. So can you not cook this in the bag? For the best experience, cook your meal right in the pot over any da 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 Pack of heat resistant cooking spoon and bowls. So you can't make this, you can't pour hot water right in the bag, huh? That's something, you guys know how I feel about them picking out food and putting it in here for me. I'm not gonna get into that again. But it is convenient when you can just pour your hot water right into the bag and just let it cook. So, ingredients wise, tagliatelle pasta, um, Drummond wheat, niacin for a sulfate, that's iron, uh, thiamine, not a, it, it's, you know, I'm going through here and it's it's not a lot of, uh, I'll show it to you, it's like a lot of real ingredients, which is cool. You can capture that if you want. So at least it feels like it's, I mean, it seems like it's some real food. <clears throat> there are several brands that I've come to know, okay, whatever. Um, they give you, if you're interested, there's a code for, um, oh, that's a different code, sorry. Well, you have that for later anyway. Save that for later, I'll bring it back up. Here's the code for this. Um, they have 16 amazing meals. I like beef stroganoff. I like hearty beef bolognese. Um, so, okay, so they have like 16 different meals and here is the 30% uh, off code if you're interested in that. And here is a scan it thing okay me me and possibly the boys and giggles maybe if she's into it we'll taste this i'm gonna taste this i'm curious i want to know um so anyway we got this you know I i'm not a fan of them picking out food and putting it in for me but at the same time i always say one of the values of these boxes is discovering things that you might not otherwise find. Maybe this is great food and I'll want to eat it later. I don't know. We'll just put it there. <coughs> and <coughs> the final item, <coughs> sorry guys, in the basic box is Signal Mirrors Rev3 Maratac. Now we've, I've seen little issued Signal Mirrors in lots of little survival kits, actual military survival kits. Ah, oh, comes with the plastic on to protect it. Okay. And this hat, this looks like the uh, standard things. So it's a signal mirror. I'm going to take the plastic off. Signal mirrors are good for signaling. What a surprise. Um, I got to get this plastic off. Ideally, I'll be honest, you wouldn't take this plastic, like if you had a brand new one, you'd leave it on until you needed to, because um, it really protects the surface. From, that's why we had training mirrors and we had real ones in our kits. Um, so you can see the mirror, the camera right there. And what you actually do, if you're not familiar with how to use a real signal mirror, um, you don't just point a mirror up and try to reflect. They have these little crosshairs so that you can actually aim at what you're looking at and see if you can see the reflection of light on typically an aircraft or something, you know, um, so that you can focus, you know, you can help focus what you're doing rather than just trying to randomly, you know, bounce light off of a flat mirror plate. Um, and this is not a hard skill to use. So in terms of a survival item, this actually is pretty damn good. Um, yeah, so you'll first, well, actually, so this could work because 
I have, let me see if I'll be able to do it. I have a light right here, see? It's not like a bright sunlight and it's got a diffuser on it. So it's, but you can see, see I'm directing it on my hand. So what you do first is just make sure that you have a bouncy contact with the light source and then you'll use your crosshairs to identify the, whatever you're trying to signal or whoever you're trying to signal to. And then uh, that way you'll look to see where you're bouncing the light. Because a lot of times what might happen is um, you don't realize, and I've seen it from the air, I've seen signal devices from the air. Um, and it can be quite directional. If the angle of where you're signaling, you might think you're, you're shooting light right up to that. But if you're signaling aft of where people can see or even forward of where people can see they might not it, it's light doesn't just diffuse out in all directions especially when you're using a mirror it hits a point and it goes somewhere and even though um, on the ground it's not it's not omnidirectional it's not going everywhere so that crosshairs is really important because that's you you can literally see where you're bouncing the light and where you need to focus it to to get it literally in somebody's face so you can see it. It's a different, it's, in movies, they just always make it look like everybody can see that light waving around on the ground. And you can't always see that, especially in other daylight, in, in daylight conditions. Um, having a signal beacon on the ground at night is is one thing, but, um, you know, doing a SAR-X in the daytime, you'll start search and rescue exercise. In the daytime, you'll see that light may glint off of a lot of other things on the ground and it's not always recognized you know as as you're flying over if that light is not focused towards the cockpit or the observer in the aircraft it might be just filtered out as though that's glint on the ground um or a twinkle or something but when you are able to focus it and you're able that that's why this is so important with the crosshair sorry i don't mean to go that much into the mirror but you have a pouch it's got protected from the elements. Um, sometimes the military ones even have kind of a felt lining to protect your mirror from all sorts of uh, scratches and stuff. But this is actually a pretty good item. <coughs> I don't know what they're charging for it, but this is the kind of thing that if you're lost in the wilderness can definitely get you found. So there we go. So that's the whole basic box. Um, you know, that's it. I'm just gonna go. When I do the short version, we'll see how the llamas feel, how they sort themselves out about this, this thing right here. Um, so let's move into the advanced box. In the advanced box, we've got one item, my medic bleed stopper med pack. Patients, all stations, we have medical items in the box. I repeat, medical items. <laughs> Presidents in his limousine, they're diverting to Andrews, the vice president is out of position, and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs is on his way. Rush priority traffic. We are now at DEFCON 3. Incoming medical rant. I believe I saw a quick clot. I think I saw those letters. I did. Okay, it's a hemostatic. I don't think anybody puts out just the. We used to have back in the days, early in this, uh, early in the global war on terror, we would just have pouches of quick clot powder. And I think I had mentioned once upon a time about hilarity ensuing. And I don't mean hilarity, but so hemostatic. I pointed this out before. Hemo. I remember the exact joke I made. Hemo meaning blood and static meaning fucking stop it. That's what I said. Static meaning stopping or, or stabilizing. Um, so this is a bandage, sorry, a dressing, and sometimes it has the bandage attached to it. Remember the dressing goes directly on your wound. The bandage wraps around to contain it all. This is impregnated with quick clot formula so that when the blood comes in contact with it, it helps to coagulate. That's what quick clot does. It creates heat and it creates a an artificial clot. That's what it's called, quick clot. Um, what it does is it, it creates an artificial um, uh, boundary is what I'm thinking of, barrier, that's what it is. And it kind of plugs up with that solidification, the wound. 
Um, the problem is, and this is just, I'm just letting you guys know, because we encountered this in the field. Like when you rip up a scab, you know, the bleeding starts. When you rip up the quick clot, if it does get ripped off, you've got all kinds of problems. Um, I'm not going to go into it too far. And that was one of the problems with the, with the old powder was that if it gets, number one, the quick clot powder reacts with anything liquid, anything liquid, including the liquid in your nose, mouth, and eyes. So whatever. And we have seen incidents like that where people have gone, have lost vision in an eye from getting quick clot blown by the wind into their eyes. Um, people have had some serious issues getting quick clot then in their, in their mouth and in their airway. Um, that's why we moved away from just the bags of the quick clot because the old bags of quick clot to rip it open and then pour in the wound and then throw something on it, it was effective as a bleeding control device. But on a windy day or, you know, a stiff breeze comes just as you're doing it and you would see in the movies guys ripping these open with their teeth, the bags ripping it open with their teeth and then pouring it on, there were, they would instruct you absolutely under no circumstances, rip the bag open with your teeth because then it's right there near your mouth. And again, all it takes is a jerking hand or a breeze to start, it's powder, it blowing this stuff everywhere. Um, <coughs> so the quick clot in the dressing means it can't get every, it's inside the dressing, it's in a layer of the dressing. So the liquid material, ideally in this case, blood would have to come up into it and then it would react. This dressing then in effect becomes part of the clot that you have it on. If you rip this dressing off for any reason, you're ripping off the clot. So the clot may go down into that wound. You can't, you can't change this dressing out. Not that you should be changing dressings out, but some people do crazy things. If, if this is now part of the clot that's formed because of the quick clot and you rip it off to change that or something, you're gonna rip that clot that you've made out with it. So we don't ever do that. All right, a little bit about quick clot. I have not touched or used real quick clot in years, 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 years. It, it might be better now, I don't know. Let's see what's in the bag though. And so this is bleed stopper. So this is not a specialty, they say specialty first aid kit. I would in fact call this maybe, <coughs> well, a trauma kit. So we have the rats tourniquet that I think as a group, we've all decided is uh, secondary in value to the, uh, the cat's tourniquet, combat application tourniquet. I was taught a specific way to use this, one way to use this, and it has offended many people in the way that I choose to use this, the way that we were taught one day. I'm not gonna get into it again, but it comes with a tourniquet. Maybe not the best tourniquet, but it's a tourniquet. Um, you've got a little permanent marker because you do need to mark things on your patient, like what time uh, a tourniquet was applied, stuff like that. Here's your massive bleed guide. Two steps for stopping massive bleeds. Using a tourniquet, packing the bleed. I am not going to comment on this at all. <coughs> not at all. Not gonna comment on this at all. And here's why, I, whether I agree with it or not, I need to acknowledge, and you guys need to hear me acknowledge, that my medical training is not as current as, and I acknowledged this before, what these 18 year old, 19 year old kids are learning out of Fort Sam Houston today blows my mind. They're doing stuff right out of medic school that we would not learn until we were up at the 30 or 40 level. So the way it works is um, attached to the MOS, which was back in my day, 91 Bravo, which I think now is a mechanics MOS because they switched them all around. That's why my channel is 91B. Um, now, so it was a 91B, uh, then I was also a 91C, which yeah, the army sent me to LPN school. So I got that attached. So as a medic and an LPN, I could do a little bit more work in some more places. Then they made everything a uh, uh, 91 whiskey. That's a W. Then I was shredded out as a 91 whiskey Mike six to indicate that I was a combat medic and I had the LPN training. Then they changed everything to make all the medics the 68 series. 68 series MOSs were mechanics and a 68 whiskey back then was a light wheeled vehicle mechanic. I know that for a fact because we worked with them in our, our headquarters platoon for our, for our uh, company. 
Why they flipped the 91s and the 68s, I don't know. But now a 68 whiskey is the new MOS for Combat Medic. You get levels. So when you're brand new, you're a level 10, and then a 20, and then a 30, and a 40. And the skill levels come with, as you increase in rank and experience, you get certified to do different things. So when I say that these 10 levels, these brand new 68 whiskey 10s right out of Fort Sam are doing things that we didn't do until we were 30 or 40 levels. I mean, like we, until we were had on the job training and we were higher ranked and, and more follow on training, they're doing the things right now, right out of school that we couldn't do until we were much higher. And they're still, they're doing things now that we never did because of the, the advance of medical training. So there's some stuff that when I comment, I'm like the old guy, I'm just the old crotchety guy with a big white beard and thick glasses on, on the porch in a rocking chair with a shotgun saying, you know, back in my day, Sonny, we didn't do, we had to walk 10 miles uphill through snow on broken glass with no shoes both ways to get to school, you know what I mean? So take it for what it's worth, uh, you know, I'm, but these both look like they're leaking in the bag. Oh no, that's just the graphic on the bag. Okay, so we have two super hand wipes. What are these made of? Polysorbate 20. Cucumber, nice. Um, these are just hand wipes. I don't, I'm looking for anything that's like antibacterial. Aloe. ST, um, glycol, that's cool. Vitamin E, fragrance. Um, <clears throat> okay, eliminates odor, antibacterial. I don't know, I don't see what the ingredients is, but you have two super hand wipes. Nitrile gloves, which is the preferred type of non latex rubber glove of most people. Compressed gauze, which is going to be your members had your bandage wraps around the dressing. And then four inch pressure, emergency pressure bandage. So this is, like I said before, it has your dressing to go right against the wound. So your sterile part, and it has a bandage attached to it to let you put, secure it and put more pressure on it. So this is, yeah, a basic, um, I can't say, yeah, you know what? All right, I'm going right back. It is exactly what they said. It's to stop bleeding. It's to stop one major bleed. <clears throat> um, you could use this in, ab, on an abdominal wound, uh, which is different than stopping a wound of a great vessel where you have pressure points against a bone um, to apply direct pressure. You can't apply direct pressure to an abdominal wound because it's just soft tissues in there and you might damage more tissues by, by trying to squeeze in there. All you can do there is maybe pack the wound a little bit and try to place your dressing and um, and stop the bleeding from coming out, but you still have internal bleeding and it's a whole mess. Um, so it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, they give you the stuff to protect yourself. They give you the scissors because the scissors, you need to expose the wound area and know what you're treating. They give you the tourniquet, <clears throat> which again is only for an extremity arms or legs, doesn't go anywhere else. Um, they give you the quick clot bandage, which you can use. Um, depending, It depends on your situation. If you would just throw that down first, um, or if you maybe would use some of these other tools before that. And you know what? I'm not gonna tell you what to do anymore because like I just said, medicine has moved on without me. I know what I would do and what order I would do things in what scenario, but I'm not going to get into that now because uh, I don't feel like I don't feel like I have enough current day knowledge to really instruct that stuff anymore. Um, I don't know what the best practice is today. So this is not bad. Honestly, it's not bad. It's not great. I would want to add a little bit more to it like always, but that's me. And this would probably fit into a nice little accessory pouch that you would buy on Amazon or get anywhere else. So I can like this. That's the advanced. In the Pro Box, <clears throat> Rockagator Mammoth Series 60 liter waterproof duffel. Okay, so that's this big thing here. And it weighs some stuff. This is everything in the Pro. Oh, this thing feels waterproof as fuck. Um, <clears throat> oh, yeah, it's totally, look at it. It's like totally rubberized. So is this what I'm getting at is we've got a combination of like dry bag and duffel bag. 
That's what it's seeming like to me. Says Rock a Gator, which could be a cool band name. I don't know. You've got some accessory webbing. We can clip stuff too, right there. It smells all nice and rubbery. I like that. I mean, it's I'm trying to get a shot inside. It's deep. It's deep and wide, just like your mom. Um, you can fit a lot of stuff in there right, if you're if you're packing. It's wow. It's deep and wide, just like your mom. And then I said you can fit a lot of stuff in there if you're packing. Okay. Clearly, I'm feeling much better. Um, but you know, standard dry bag. Where's the? Uh, are we missing? Oh, okay. Now here, here we got. But and then, but beyond just a regular dry bag, now you actually have a duffel to carry it all in, because then you have these clips to secure the ends over here, dry bag style. Um, and you have D-rings to secure it or, you know, lash it to things. This is, you know what? When I first saw it, I was like, oh great, a duffel bag, oh, okay. But you know what? This thing looks tough as hell. It's thick material and <clears throat> you know what I'm imagining? Like, so I'm always thinking ahead you need to travel cross country and you don't know what the weather's gonna be like, throw this on top of the car, truck, whatever. No matter what you drive through, your shit is staying dry and secure in this. Um, and I'm automatic, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, my drive for reasons that you will see soon. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking about my drive from Idaho to Florida uh, and then Florida to Pennsylvania. Um, this is a sturdy ass bag. <coughs> whether you are uh, caching things for, you know, the end of the world or just traveling, this will keep your stuff pretty dry. And and the point is, what I don't like about regular dry bags is that, you know, then you got to put them in something or this becomes your whole, you could use this as a regular duffel bag too. Um, so this is nice because you don't have to then find something to put your dry bag in. It's a little weighty. It's a little, it's got, it's got a little bit of weight to it, but uh, not bad. 60 liters. Yeah, I could, I could like this. I'm still not sure it's the kind of thing I'm looking for from Battlebox, but at the same time, the quality is there. <clears throat> and, you know, if I was still going on TDY, or something temporary, you know, duty somewhere, whatever. This might be just the kind of bag I would I would pack for like my 72 hour bag because no matter where they end up sending me, no matter what might happen, no matter what region they're sending me to, this is gonna keep all my stuff, all my clothes, uniforms, whatever, nice and dry and safe. So, you know what? I actually do like this, I do. But I'm gonna move it so we have room for the other thing. So the last item is a Civivi Fixed blade, the fixed blade elementum. <coughs> now I think that the Civivi elementum is arguably Civivi's most well-known blade. Um, people love it and they do all sorts of stuff with it. And so now they have a fixed blade version of it. Uh, I'm gonna drop some specs right here. Okay. Let's see. Um, I have not seen a fixed blade from Civivi before. So, right. we got a cloth, which, hmm, hmm. Step up your game a little bit, Civivi. We've seen much nicer. We, of course, their sticker is an elementum, is a folding elementum. That is their, their sticker. Uh, product use warranty, do not eat. And this is, <clears throat> just a little, you know, buy our stuff kind of deal. So let's check out the knife. Actually, this is pretty nice because I believe that this is, I was expecting it to just be, you know, a fixed blade version of the Elementum, but this is a bit bigger. This is a pretty nice rendition of a larger Elementum. Micarta scales, from what I take, we'll look and see if I'm wrong. 
but it's got kind of all the lines of the elementum but bigger but larger faster and more intensity um, same hollow grind nice drop point shape let me see what kind of steel this has given us <clears throat> d2 not surprised at all uh, great jimping right up there where the thumb goes um, i'm looking for something to wipe down the blade okay oh that's gross hang on i'm still here guys some very nice grind line action going on there it feels nice it's a shame they took all the all the uh, internal strands out of this 550 cord because this would be a good, decent amount of 550 cord to carry around with you too. I'm not going to walk around with this. I'm going to take this off. There's another different weave I'd rather have on my knife, but TechLock is a little interesting. It's uh... a. <clears throat> It is not a tech lock I've seen. I don't know what's going on with it. Oh, I see. Okay, so you can adjust your belt loop size there with that screw. That's what it is. Not only is it great retention, but it makes a nice funny sound for us for the unboxing. Let's see. That is finished nice. This is actually, so the Elementum feels good as an EDC knife, but if they made a folding Elementum this size, I would absolutely carry it around. I carry it around a lot. Because this feels very, very nice. Let's see. That was good. And pull through was like nothing, nothing at all. And pew. Pew, pew, pew. Very nice, very nicely done. Civivi does make some really nice knives. Um, the handle, I don't know what it is about the handle. I, I, you know, okay, so this would represent on, on the folding Civivi where the flipper would be. I don't think it needs to be there on this knife. And in fact, I would like my hand to be able, I'd like my finger to be able to go just a little bit higher on there. And you see that if I do that, I'm so this is kind of a choil, but I've also got a hard edge right there where I'm risking a little a little kiss, a little kiss from the blade. Um, that would be, I think that's my only complaint. I was trying to figure out why, why I had a little bit of a comfort issue on the blade. And comfort issue is not the right word. It's a comfortable handle. I said blade, I meant handle. Comfortable comfort issue on the handle. It's just because this kind of keeps your hand here, and I want my hand right about there. That's all. Um, and that is not really a choil. That's not a choil for your hand. That's for sharpening. You know, so you can get the whole blade on the sharpening stone. This is my one issue. And I, like I said, I understand why they did it. To mimic the look on the folding knife. Um, but this is a nice fixed blade knife. I don't know if I think it's a Pro Plus knife. To be honest with you. Because, <coughs> you know, I have to look up how much it costs and all. Um, but... This is a nice knife. I mean, it's I, it's not a knife that I don't like, and it's a knife that I might carry in those times where I carry a fixed blade. So I wonder if there's a choice in different micarta colors or anything. Sometimes they do that. I don't I don't see it saying there. Um, no, but definitely a nice fixed blade piece. EDC friendly fixed blade, blade piece. I'd say for those of you who like the EDC fixed blade. So that is mission 106. I'll, you know, I gotta tell you the truth. I was hoping that for the Christmas box, the December box, they'd pump it up a little bit. Maybe some more items, maybe some more fun items. Um, but for what we got, this is decent. Like I said, I, there's always, when we do medical stuff, there's always stuff I'd like to add. This is, you know, God forbid you need it. This is a very good piece of gear. Um, I'm curious about the food. I might try it. I think we'll definitely do a tasting of it and, and see what we got. Um, and then we got the big old bag here. But 
I feel a little let down um, by the number of stuff in the bag and, and everything. I don't know how the, the dollar value ends up, but this is it. This is our last, oh, and then, you know, of course the utensil set. But this is our last, our last battle box on the channel. So with eight minutes on the battery here on the camera, I wanna know guys, what do you think? Are you happy? Giggle said sorry. I didn't even, I turned around, she was standing behind me. I thought I was about to be like murdered. <laughs> um, you guys happy with this box? Not happy with this box? Did you expect maybe a little bit more for December or is it like just right on par with, I mean, what do you think? Um, favorite items, least favorite items? Give me your, give me your, your thoughts on it. And with this again being our last battle box on the channel, what subscription or items in general do you want to see it replaced with? You guys let me know, because I have some thoughts, but I want to know what you want to see, because that's the important part. So thank you all, number one, for unboxing 100 battle boxes with me on this little rinky dink channel. That is awesome. If you're not already subscribed, I hope you will think about it and hit that little button and, you know, turn on your notifications and comment and share with your friends and help us build the channel up a little bit. Stand by for a cool new Christmas giveaway, by the way. Thank you in general for watching the videos and making this channel what it is. Remember that you guys are all absolutely awesome. I appreciate every single one of you. And I'll be back again real soon.